Hello once again and welcome as we bring you the most comprehensive update on auction results for the last week. And as you'll hear from Kevin Brogan at CoreLogic in just a moment, the clearance rate that is likely to come out at the end of this week will unlikely be over 70%. More details from Kevin in just one moment. In today's market, great ideas alone simply aren't enough, but innovative execution can hand you a real competitive advantage. Nightlight is a cutting-edge illuminated signboard by Printforce that offers round-the-clock visibility and features that maximise advertising space, improving your exposure. Buyers can now see the full picture, day or night, with Nightlight's edge-to-edge -edge illuminated surface, which utilises environmentally friendly, scratch-resistant technology. Now available in 6x4 and 8x4. Nightlight is as versatile as you need to be in today's market. Let your clients know you're working day and night for them, and then prove it with Nightlight. Welcome back to the show, and we also welcome in Kevin Brogan from CoreLogic. Uh, good afternoon, Kevin. I got it right this time. Hi, Kevin. How are you going? Oh, I'm very well, my friend. Now, at the uh, top there, I just said that it's unlikely at the end of the week we're going to see a final clearance rate over 70%, but the initial clearance rate is 71.3%. Let's bring those figures up now. That's the weighted average for the nation. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's the uh, the weighted average, Kevin, for the uh, capital cities. And I think the last couple of weeks that has been impacted by the fact that first Melbourne had uh, a very quiet week last week. Uh, and this week, Sydney has got a, uh, a reduced level of activity mm. because of a public holiday in the uh, in the NRL final. Mm, yeah. Yeah, well, of course, um, you'd have to say Melbourne, yeah, that clearance rate, 73.8%, 79% for Sydney. Um, even though there were reduced numbers in Sydney, it sort of indicates that the stock levels, while they're low, buyer demand is still pretty high. Yeah, look, it, it does. I mean, last week in, in Melbourne, with very restricted supply, we did see the, uh, the clearance rate tick up. Uh, a bit because of the lack of supply. Similar sort of issue in Sydney. I mean, we we have seen by way of context significant uh, buyer demand for the uh, the last couple of months. Um, I think in in Sydney, it's not quite the same as Melbourne last week. The public holiday and the NRL Grand Final didn't really interfere directly with mm. um, Saturday being the main selling day. So we've seen a bit more activity out of Sydney. Um, this week, but still, mm. uh, I mean, there were 950 last week, so uh, down to 316. So it's a significant fall, um, but still a reasonable uh, amount of activity. Just looking at those numbers out of Brisbane, too, 37.8%, a pretty poor result, you'd have to say, but still a lot of auctions yet to be reported. But as you've pointed out in the past, some of those late reports are necessarily, uh, well, aren't necessarily good either, are they? No, that's right. But I, I think um, what what we've also seen this week is um, public holidays. So we've got Labor Day in New South Wales, ACT in South Australia, and I believe mm. you have the uh, Queen's uh, birthday in um, uh, in Brisbane. So um, it's interesting on holiday weekends, quite understandably, real estate agents don't want to hang around and talk to us after uh, after they've <laughs> undertaken an auction. So we do uh, we do face a challenge on uh, yeah. holiday weekends in getting results in. So look, it might be a lack of participation because of the um, the long weekend, but it's also uh, quite difficult to get the results in. So one one to watch for our um, our update later in the week. Yeah, well, we'll certainly do that later in the week and a little bit later in this show too. We're going to take you inside the top sales in all the cap cities, and I've got to say we won't give away too much. But that property in Adelaide, the top sale in Adelaide, is it's a standout. I don't think I've seen anything quite like that in a long time. So we'll take you to that one. I know you must be salivating just wanting to talk about that one, Kevin. <laughs> it's a street I know well. Oh, yeah, and it's a, it's a beautiful property. But let's firstly take you to the Sydney sub-regions uh, before we take you into the top sale in Sydney. Okay, walk us through this, Kevin. 
Yeah, so as, as we said, in, in aggregate in Sydney, a, uh, a relatively quiet weekend with only 300 or so uh, so auctions. Um, the Inner West is leading the pack uh, at 91.7% clearance rate, but a, a relatively modest number of auctions there. Um, you know, the, the biggest weekend, uh, sorry, the biggest uh, auction weekend was North Sydney and Hornsby. Um, and that got 83.8%, which is mm. pretty solid. If you have a look at, uh, across the subregions, uh, you'll see quite a few of them are up at or around um, that 80% mark. I mean, City and Inner South missing it by a hair's breadth at 793 um, So most of the regions actually performing uh, pretty well, uh, but you'll see a couple of, of regions there with, with insufficient activity to sort of generate a reliable outcome. A top sale out of Sydney coming out of Queenscliff, and we'll just take you to our Just Click video. Uh, the internals of this property was sold by Clark and Hamill's uh, Mike Dunn and Michael Clark, a four bedroom home. This is a Hampston style home uh, on the high side of the street. Believe it or not, uh, well, I'm sure you will, ocean views from the main bedroom balcony and of quite an easy walk to schools and beaches. Uh, tell us about this property and Queenscliff, Kevin. Yeah, so que Queenscliff, um, for people outside Sydney, may not be as well known as, uh, as say, Manly, which is immediately to the south. And it, this um, area is located between Manly and Curl Curl. Um, it is extremely tightly held. Uh, we've mentioned before that the average length of uh, home ownership is an indication as to how tightly held it is. And, and uh, in Queenscliff, it's 17 years. Mm. Uh, this property did sell in 2014 for 2.45 million. Uh, so you can see that there was a, a bit of uh, growth there and the property was advertised with a guide price of 3.1 million. So you can see that the result mm. there at 3.45 million uh, is actually a really good result uh, for this location. It is indeed. And congratulations to Mike and uh, and Michael on achieving that sale. We'll take you to Melbourne now, the sub-regions there. Uh, inner South, uh, good result, 90%. A uh, good number of auctions coming out of North East too and a fairly, a fairly good result at 71%. Oh look, absolutely, and the the um, the subregion we've been following quite uh, quite closely as being the most um, successful has been the outer east, and uh, this week at eighty one point six percent, that again is a really mm. strong result. Um, further across in the uh, other direction, over in the west, we see uh, one of the busier regions, uh, one hundred and one results in the west, uh, sixty percent clearance rate, so not quite so strong over mm. there. Mm. Very good. Okay, our top sale out of Victoria comes out of Fitzroy North, uh, 214 Park Street, 2467000 for this property. Colin Abbas and Rick Daniel from Nelson Alexander, six bedroom, one bathroom, two car. Been in the same family for about 40 years. Redevelopment potential here, of course, always subject to council approval. Uh, it was previously a childcare centre as part of its history and also... Um, it, it, it dates right back because I believe in reading the description, Kevin, there was a two-level former stable uh, and that's been converted into bedrooms. Uh, yes, that's right, Kevin. Uh, not sure whether this one's heritage listed. There's no mention of it. Um, as as you said, yes. there's a possibility for redevelopment here. Um, I think this property, I say, benefits from what I might best describe as an unfortunate extension uh, on the front side, which really does impact on the street appeal. But there mm. may be something behind that that uh, uh, lends to renovation rather than redevelopment. Yes. Interesting one, history with this one too. Yeah. Oh, look, absolutely. I mean, the the, um, the property was purchased, as you said, 40 uh, odd years ago, 1979 for $63,000. Mm. Um, and it does have uh, an indication of a non-residential use in its past. Yes. But Fitzroy, uh, so close into the city, um, really quite a large block here, 518 square metres. Um, I mentioned again about uh, how these these areas are tightly held, 16 year um, average length of ownership for mm. houses. Mm. Um, very uh, highly sought after, lots of, um, you know, sort of old character dwellings in this uh, in this location. Medium price, about 1.36 million. That's down almost 10% uh, on 2018. 
But once again, I mean, this is an area which we see fairly solid and sustained growth yes. um, as, a, as an area that people do hold quite tightly once they get into it. Yeah, indeed. Top sale out of Queensland comes out of Brisbane, one of the blue chip suburbs at Cooparoo, 93 Cirrus Street, 1,870,000. Space Properties, uh, Angus and Warren selling this five better. A prime hilltop location is we do find a lot of these uh, um, areas around Cooparoo too facing directly toward the city. A feeling of uh, being amongst the treetops because very open feel as you'll see from some of these photographs from our Just Click video. A clever use of space allowing for a growing family and I have to mention this, a great men's shed. <laughs> Yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, I thought that might appeal to you. It did. It did. Uh, look, this is this is also to to give that sense of space. I mean, this this backs on to the Sirius Street um, Park, but also is very close to the White Hill Reserve. It's a seven hundred and ninety four square meter block, so really quite generous. And as you say, I mean, you you feel like you're amongst the treetops. Very um, modern, open plan. Uh, feel to the property, polished timber floorboards, um, swimming pool. It's kind of got a bit of a resort feel around uh, around the sort of external areas as yeah. well. What about Cooparoo itself? Yeah, so the, the median house price is uh, around 845000 and that's actually been pretty stable. Um, so over the last couple of years, there hasn't been a lot of capital growth, but nonetheless, it's um, it's one of those areas that's actually uh, mm. continued to perform quite well. And this obviously, um, you know, with that median price being less than half the price that achieved for this, this is something which uh, which sticks out even in quite a high, uh, high median value suburb. Stay with us after this very short break. We'll take you to the ACT, South Australia and that classic home. Can't wait to show you that one. And also across to WA as we take you around Australia, look at our top properties. And we do this with the compliments of CoreLogic. Kevin Brogan uh, will rejoin me again in just one moment. Hi, everyone. My name's Nick and I'm the country manager here at Beepo. We offer outsourcing services for real estate agencies that are looking to become significantly more productive and efficient. Let me give you a bit of a rundown about how our real estate team actually works. At Beepo, we have many positions to assist our clients in the real estate industry. These include sales assistants, trust account and marketing staff. We also have a couple of our most popular products, the property management assistants and rock end property assistants. Welcome back once again, and uh, Kevin Brogan from CoreLogic is with me, and we're looking at the top sales now around Australia. Just to recap uh, our weighted average uh, preliminary result from the last week, 71.3%. Let's take you to the ACT now uh, with uh, our top sale there comes out of Dunlop, 40 Stump Jump Crescent, 661,000. LJ Hooker's uh, Shane Hagen, or Hegan, Sorry, Shane, selling this for better. North-facing property, well-maintained, ducted gas heating, which is what you'd like in uh, ACT, and also uh, air conditioning. Don't know a lot about Dunlop, Kevin. What can you tell me? Yeah, so the, the last few that we've looked out out of the ACT have actually been really quite central. Um, Dunlop is uh, out to the far northwest um, of, uh, of Canberra. So it's, it's a good 25 kilometres away from the Canberra uh, city centre. But uh, one thing it does have in common with other properties we've described uh, from Canberra is it actually faces onto a reserve. It's surrounded by um, reserves um, and again has a very sort of open mm. feel. Um, it's, this is a, um, a relatively modern uh, style of property, a, a 157 square metre, four bedroom property in cream brick, single storey. Um, the median house price in Dunlop is 577,000. So this is a little Just above a touch that. touch above that. Yeah. Um, but um, this this is, as you, as you might expect, a, a suburb where there's probably a greater um, degree of homogeneity across the uh, the housing stock. That's a nice word, homogeneity or homogeneity, whatever. <laughs> Good on you. Well done. 
introducing new words. And um, Let's take you to South Australia now. This is the property I really wanted to show. I reckon this is um, hats off for this one. Top property of the week, I think. North Adelaide, 1650000 for the property at one three, uh, sorry, 173 Jeffcoat Street. Uh, Smallcomb Real Estates, Robin Coles and Mark uh, um, Mittiger. Nine bedrooms, seven bathrooms. Wow, have a look at this. Beautifully restored freestone uh, villa, circa 1890, I would think, Kevin. Self-contained studio, 3.8 metre ceilings, polished floors, marble fire fireplaces. And I counted six fireplaces in there, Kevin. Yes, absolutely. Um, so you're right. I mean, the, the thing that uh, struck me about this, you just mentioned 3.8 metre ceilings. That's mm. huge. Um, Jeffcott Street is uh, now actually one of the main arterial roads down through North Adelaide into Adelaide. Um, but it was, uh, and sorry, it has become that because it was a very grand uh, street with, uh, with houses just like this running up and down uh, on either side. So uh, in a previous role, I valued a number of these up and down Jeffcote Street. Um, they are, again, really quite tightly held. And we've seen quite a significant increase in the median sale price in, mm. uh, in North Adelaide. Um, it's actually 1.165 million now. Mm. And it has, uh, it has increased really quite sharply over the last three years. Uh, just to give you an idea, I mean, this, this property obviously sold longer ago than that, but 2000 and Six, it sold for eight hundred and seventy-five thousand. Um, and many of these uh, houses have, at some point in their life, been used as um, uh, as, as uh, sort of boarding houses because the setup that they have with that large number of bedrooms has lent themselves to it. I'm not sure that this one has, um, but clearly they were uh, they were built in the um, uh, in the early stages of the establishment of Adelaide as mm. really quite grand houses on a, a very wide and grand street. Indeed. Yeah, and no, a beautiful home, a uh, beautiful home. Let's go to WA now. Our top sale out of Western Australia is in West Leaderville, 92 Blen Blencow Street, uh, 2510000 Real Marks Christopher D selling this five better. Iconic Federation style, circa 1913. Great location. Loads of entertaining and family areas, both indoor and outdoor. West Leaderville. Tell me about that, Kevin. Yeah, so West Leaderville is only about three kilometres to the west of the Perth CBD. So it is it is very central. It's just north of the Botanic, uh, the Botanic Park there. Um, given that it's only, um, you know, literally walking distance from the CBD to have an almost 1100 square meter block, um, this really is something um, sort of quite special. The, the house is solid brick. It was built in 1945. Um, but in 2007, there was a second story added to it. And it's got a, a commanding street presence and street appeal. Mm. Um, polished timber floors um, and lots of um, ornate ceiling cornices and um, and architraves ar around, you know, give this a really good, solid quality feel. Mm. Um, you mentioned the outdoor entertaining uh, center. I mean, if you have a look at that, that is an absolutely stunning um, facility for uh, for this property. The median price um, in West Leaderville, $1.1 million. And that has uh, come down about 8% since last year. And as, as we've discussed before, the Perth market generally has been experiencing some really quite soft conditions yes. for, uh, for a number of years now. Okay, well, just before we go, uh, we'll just recap for you the preliminary clearance rates from CoreLogic showing Sydney 79.8%, Melbourne 73.8%, Brisbane 37.3%, Adelaide 50 right on, and uh, in Perth 625 Canberra 73.9%, uh, giving us a weighted average of 71.3%. Now, Kevin Brogan will be back on Friday with the final numbers from all of those areas. Uh, Kevin, uh, you're tipping that we'll just go a touch under 70% final clearance rate? Yes, look, I, I think it's likely it will come down because although um, the Sydney clearance rate is is uh, the highest, uh, it is over a, a smaller number of auctions. So its influence will be mm -hmm. um, less than usual, 
and we'll see those uh, those weaker results from the combined uh, smaller capitals coming into play. So, yep, I think it'll edge under 70. Very good. Kevin Brogan from CoolLogic will rejoin me on Friday. We'll look at the final numbers. Kevin, thanks very much for your time. Have a great weekend. Oh, sorry, have a great week for what's left of it. <laughs> and uh, I'll talk to you soon. No worries. Thanks a lot, Kevin.